berapa lama lagi kita mau let's say let's say let's say keputusan besok tidak memihak sama SLS apa lagi peluang yang kita ada I think what we need to understand is that there are several things that went wrong okay Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Ini hari Ini adalah edisi khas Untuk SLS Apa tu SLS? SLS tu adalah Sabah Law Society Eh, kamu masih lagi nak faham? Okey, nak apa? Yang penting sebelum kita cerita pasal SLS Saya mau tunjuk sama kamu Kamu kenalkan ni bendera Inilah bendera yang Bila kita jadi sebahagian daripada state of Malaysia sebagai state of Sabah inilah bendera kita ha, ini bendera ni so di Sabah ni kalau kamu masih lagi nak tahu ini bendera ni jangan kau pula kau fikir bila kita angkat bendera ni bendera apa ni inilah bendera kita yang berkuat kuasa sejak MA63 dalam perlembagaan persekutuan tu ada banyak hak-hak kita Sabah dan Sarawak ni kan ni bendera ni tapi apa yang kita mau cerita ni? Ha ah, ni mau bagi ingat balik ni. Di dalam Perlembagaan Persekutuan ni kita ada hak kita. Tapi benda paling menarik dalam dunia ni, apa yang paling menarik? Cuba kamu komen di bawah. Apa benda paling menarik? Tapi saya fikir kalau di social media ni kalau bukan pasal masalah rumah tangga orang, kedua yang menarik adalah duit. <laughs> Betul kan? Jadi duit ni sebenarnya kita mau tahu macam mana pasal duit kita di Sabah jadi bersama dengan kita pada hari ini Datuk Roger Chin <laughs> ok so sebelum kita cerita banyak-banyak kan sebelum kita bercerita sama Datuk Roger Chin ni saya kenalkanlah sama kamu sebenarnya kita boleh cari je maklumat pasal Datuk Roger Chin ni Datuk Roger Chin ni adalah uh, mantan uh, mantan Presiden SLS sebelum ni dan di bawah uh, semasa dia jadi presiden ni ha, dia bawa ni dia bawa benda ni ke mahkamah jadi saya bukanlah orang yang paling tepat untuk mau bagi tahu kita jemput ni sebab kita mau tahu sendiri daripada dia apa benda ni kan apa benda ni yang mau dibawa ni besok kan besok kita akan ay, kita doakan lah yang terbaik untuk Datuk dan juga uh, kawan-kawan so saya nak mau buang masa sama kamu kita dengar daripada Datuk bagi tahu sama kami uh, apa yang sebenarnya berlaku dan kes ni macam mana yang supaya kami boleh faham lah. ok um, sorry I'll just use English to explain boleh um, easier uh, so this action is basically about Sabah's right to 40% revenue derived from Sabah Okay, so the federal government has got rights to uh, um, get money from the state via taxes or whatever, um, and out of that, forty percent is actually meant to come back to Sabah, mm-hmm. the revenue derived from the state. So this is obviously in the federal constitution, yes. and uh, this is what was given to Sabah when Sabah formed Malaysia mm-hmm. together with Sab- uh, Sarawak and Singapore and uh, Singapore at that time mm-hmm. so because of this um, what has happened unfortunately after 1974 is it 69 okay. yeah 1974 yeah. Um, there was meant to be a review it was never done so what is meant to happen is this when we formed Malaysia uh, the first two reviews were meant to be done in 1970 what is it 1970 and 1974 or 1975 anyway every around then mm-hmm. um, but the second review was never done so the first review was done and then the second review was never done so what happened was we were stuck at the same last figure for about 48 years when mm-hmm. it should have been reviewed to be more in line with uh, the current f- uh, uh, um, uh, uh, revenue okay mm-hmm. you can imagine In 1969, the revenue derived from Sabah 
of course it'll be very little right yeah. 48 years later it will be a lot more so imagine back then mm. there was no such thing as palm oil yeah, okay yeah, yeah. oil and gas probably was only starting to be mined it wasn't there yet so you have the two biggest contributors uh, oil and gas as well as as uh, as, as uh, palm oil and whatever else all the other taxes um, they were not even there and because mm. they were not even there what it means is that um, the figure will keep rising every year obviously as we get richer we pay more taxes and we get more we pay more taxes the federal government derives more money from Sabah mm -hmm. and because they derive more money from Sabah that 40% is meant to keep increasing all the time however like I said for 48 years it never increased it was stuck at that figure mm -hmm. and we have lost a lot of ground so what is this action this action is basically to fight to get back those lost figures to try to make the federal government account for these figures um, what the actual figures are so that we can get what is rightfully the 40 percent tapi kamu sudah baca juga kan ada subtitle tadi kan ha, sebab jangan risau sebab saya nak mau ganggu kita punya kawan kita Datuk Roger besok dia akan pergi mahkamah of course dia akan bercakap lebih banyak lagi sebab benda ni sudah jadi kes mahkamah so of course hari ni kita cuma mau dapatkan Uh, sedikit pencerahan lah pencerahan okay? tadi dia cakap pasal sampai tahun 74 sejak kita dapat uh, jumlah yang sepatutnya lepas tu tidak ada review sampai 48 tahun <coughs> ada ada tak lagi uh, mungkin sumber pendapatan selain dari Pak Moel um, oh, there be lots of things uh, um, customs maybe ah. uh, customs uh, what else is there Uh, income tax pun ada, yeah. right? The the money, the the people who earn money here, and then they they pay their income taxes. That's money derived. We 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 would be arguing that that is obviously money that comes from the state because our people work here, <coughs> the Sabahans work here. They make money, they pay taxes, mm. so that is money derived from the state. Uh, mm. Anything that you can think of, however that we are paying in taxes that comes from Sabah, we would be saying that the 40% should be from there also. Apa saja yang kerajaan persekutuan dapat dari Sabah? Yes. Right. Yeah. So, itu maksud dia. Tapi, ramai juga yang cakap begini, Datuk. Mana ada itu 40% dalam perlembagaan persekutuan? Ada juga orang cakap macam itu, kan? Yeah. So, uh, bila kita cakap sama orang yang mungkin dia tidak tahu pasal undang-undang, dia dia cuma mungkin mau dengar-dengar cerita-cerita politik, kan? So, so, akan ada orang cakap mana ada itu 40% tu tiada so macam mana kita mau kasih tahu semua dia orang well it definitely is you just have to look at 112C okay. um, when you look at 112C it's very clear what that 40% it's not stated as 40% it's yes. stated as what is it 2 uh, 2 right yeah 2 yeah. uh, so when it's 2 fifths that's 40% and from there you will look at it you will understand that that's exactly what it is it's stated there very clearly in Okay, before yeah. sebelum yeah. kita mungkin sementara kita tengah cari yeah. kan mm. uh, apa nasihat datuk kepada uh, kepada saya pun bukan juga latar belakang undang-undang mm. kan saya cuba seorang marketer ini ramai orang tidak tahu ni I am just a marketer mm. this is not about me lah tonight tapi ramai orang tidak tahu apa bahasa saya punya forte ni so I, when I started to come out to the public orang mula nampak saya bising pasal M63 actually I'm a marketer so how saya lah personally macam mana saya mau memahami saya punya klien previously saya belajar sama Zainal Ajmain about MA63 so saya deep down in my heart saya cakap saya tidak akan faham dia ni selagi saya tidak baca dia punya apa yang dia tulis apa yang dia baca so until I get the book that he read only then saya faham apa dia cakap so the problem with our society kan bila kita cakap pasal ada buku macam ni ah saya bukan lawyer saya bukan ada perlu mau baca ni dia pun tidak mau baca tapi dia mau tahu so <laughs> macam mana dia mau faham what is your advice to them <laughs> i think i think the the short answer is um, like what you said yeah. you really do have to read it because um, a lot of the things is not clear i've always said this sorry it is in 112c when you read it it's read together with different sections and that is why yeah, yeah. it's very hard to understand yeah. okay and You can have the simplified version, but if you look at the simplified version, uh, then you 
maybe we will not get the full picture. Yeah. So what you need to do is still read this and then go to each of the sections. No choice. Yeah, huh? no choice. Because the 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 uh, is actually a very difficult piece of document to understand. Yeah. Memang, because I read it and I read it many times and even I get confused so many of the times. Yeah, yeah. Right? I read it and then it says I have to go to part four, uh, schedule two, um, and all of these different places. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard, but you have no choice. What you need to do is you need to go through it. You need to read it and actually go to the different parts, go to the different schedules and read it one by one and try to make sense of it. That is the only way you're going to understand it. Mm -hmm. So there is no shortcut to this, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? If you don't read it, you're never going to understand it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> for example you yeah <laughs> so we all have to listen to all your podcasts so that they can understand it better that would be the simplified version yeah. so you listen and then instead of reading tak payah baca sudah tu kan yeah so uh, memang no choice huh? memang no choice so, basically uh, contoh lah contoh lah bila mula-mula tu saya dapat ini ya. Eh. Ini kita kita kan hari ini kita bukan cerita pasal undang-undang kita cerita pasal kita seimbang ini cerita ini bersantai so mula-mula tu yang kita tahu inilah M63 kan inilah inilah tapi bila kita saya dapat ini banyak perkataan-perkataan yang gantung bila saya bacakan apa dia cakap ni apa dia cakap ni apa dia cakap so di situlah sebenarnya saya cakap dia bukannya kita tidak faham dia bukan masalah bahasa ni Ha, bukan masalah bahasa ni dia adalah masalah ada puzzle yang the missing piece tu so, the missing piece tu yang ini ni dia punya kawan ni kalau kamu tahu dia mesti kau kena ada dengan ini <laughs> 57 1957 ni yang perlembagaan persekutuan yang pertama sekali ha, bila uh, British kasih keluar saja perlembagaan untuk tanah Melayu tu 57 tu uh, barulah kita boleh nampak the whole thing ni macam mana ini masuk dalam ni dan kemudian dia jadilah ini so <coughs> itulah sebenarnya bila saya jemput Datuk ni untuk kongsi pada malam ni apa yang SLS buat ni sebenarnya adalah untuk tuntut hak kita ha, sama ada mahkamah nampak benda tu betul ataupun tidak itu terserah pada mahkamah lah kan so kita cuma melihat dari sudut yang kita nampak itu macam hak kita ni ha, jadi SLS ni buat secara percuma dalam bahasa undang-undang dah apa pro bono pro bono yes pro bono kau bayangkan kau punya duit kau punya anak punya duit lah cerita dia kan kita punya keluarga punya ni daripada atuk nenek kita punya pendapatan ni ada orang berusaha untuk mendapatkannya dari sudut perlembagaan dan buat percuma jadi senang cerita memang kita kena sokong datuk Roger Chin dan juga SLS hari Kamis ni dan sekarang kita pergi kepada kronologi ok bukankah sepatutnya sepatutnya bukankah benda ni uh, dibuat pada September 2023 yes kenapa yeah. uh, Mei 2024 so at that time what happened was it was meant to be heard uh, on in September but all of a sudden the court told us the court of appeal told us that uh, it would be adjourned to another date okay mm -hmm. um, I can't quite recall what the reason was um, but they said it would be adjourned to another date we tried to get the earliest date possible however mm -hmm. the other parties which is the federal uh, government as well as the state government um, were I one of them either one of them were not free on earlier dates and mm -hmm. therefore the earliest possible date that we could get was unfortunately uh, in, in, in May so that was a long delay because of that of course um, we would have been good if we had actually done it in September uh, because if we had done it in September and we had succeeded uh, we would be a lot further in to the proceedings already so maybe I can just explain a little bit about what um, uh, judicial review is yeah, yeah. okay so judicial review is this basically when the government or the government bodies makes a decision and you do not like that decision for whatever reason you go for judicial review mm. okay the judicial review is basically you asking the court to 
for example, um, uh, um, what we call quash, meaning get rid of that decision. Mm -hmm. um, you can seek a lot of different other things. But basically, if you are not happy with a government decision, you would do a judicial review. Oh. But judicial review is two stage. The first stage is you need to get leave, what we call permission. Okay? Okay. So, you, so there are two stages. The first one is the leave stage, the permission stage. And if you can get the permission stage, you go to the, the argue, what we call the, 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 the substantive, the meat. You go to the meat, the pasto. Huh? Okay. So you start up with the, uh, the, the leave application. So Sabalo Society, SLS, um, did the judicial review. We actually did obtain the permission from the court to proceed to argue about the substance. Tapi, what happened was, unfortunately, the federal government appealed to that decision. And because oh, of that yeah. appeal, that was where the September was meant to be heard. But for whatever reason, the Court of Appeal a journey to another date and because parties were not available and the earliest time that we could get all three parties together was in May. Okay. Berapa penting 16 May ni untuk orang Sabah? Why it's important is this. There is an appeal there is an appeal by the federal government to say that the permission should never have been granted to SLS. Oh. So if that is correct and the court agrees with them, what would that mean? It would mean that the whole action is at the end. Oh. Okay. So it is important because SLS needs to succeed at the appeal and if they succeed at the appeal, then only then can we go and argue about the substance, which is about the 40%, which is about how you calculate the 40% um, and uh, about accounting for all the lost years, the years, the 48 years that we're talking about. But you will not get there if you cannot overcome the September, uh, the, the, the May 16 part because that is the appeal. So you need to, SLS needs to overcome the appeal in order to argue the substance. Without getting past tomorrow's hurdle, we would not need to proceed any further. So that is why it is very crucial that this hearing is heard and hopefully SLS will succeed so that we can finally arrive at what we want to argue about which is the 40%, how to calculate it, and accounting for the lost years. But let me explain a little bit more about why, um, why, why this thing is, is important. For 40, no, uh, more than that, for, for a good nearly 50 years, we have been talking about this 40%. We have had many governments, uh, even s since BN days, and then pass uh, um, BN, Pakatan, Perikatan, back to unity government. All of these people have been discussing about this 40%. 40%. However, notwithstanding, and this is over how many years? It'd yeah. be over easily, what? How long has it been? More than a decade? More than a decade, more than 10 years. But notwithstanding that they keep discussing, they can never agree with each other. Why cannot they agree with each other? Very simple. They can't agree because they can't agree on how to calculate. How do you calculate this 40%? That is already a problem. Number one, you need to agree that there is 40% that is due to you. After you agree that there is 40% due to you, you will then have to calculate the 40%. How do you calculate up by the formula? Mm. Again, and then only you, once you have received these two things are you able to calculate but we have never been able to agree on this which is how with number one whether or not you're entitled to 40 percent you remember uh Teku Zafro yes. said there is no more 40 percent no more yeah remember that huh? Teku Zafro said there is no more 40 percent so the first question is is there 40 percent so the action, the meat of the action is obviously this. SLS is saying that there is 40%, number one. Number two, how do you calculate the 40%? The action has got a formula inside there. 
and once we can solve the first two issues we can finally get to calculating what the 40 percent is this is the exact thing that we have never been able to agree notwithstanding that the federal government and state governments have been discussing this for so many years so the easiest thing to do is let the court decide because mm. that is exactly what the court is meant to do when there is a problem in agreeing to the constitution you bring it to court you bring it to court and the court will tell you what the constitution means so we are doing exactly what perhaps should have been done a long time ago and unfortunately it wasn't done and at that time when we started the action last year there was a lot of people who wanted this we heard the voices they were very very strong the voices of the people were we want our 40 percent let's look at our roads everywhere yeah, yeah. right look at our development do you think it should be like this clearly it should not be like this mm. Sabah should be a lot better off today and one of the main reasons why it's not like that is because obviously we're not getting the revenue that is due to us mm. okay so that is why tomorrow's appeal is very important it's very important because SLS needs to overcome the appeal and once we succeed in overcoming the appeal then we can get to the real question is Sabah entitled to the 40% and if Sabah is entitled to the 40% how do you calculate the 40% what is the formula what are we looking at what sort of revenues are we looking at the parties which is the federal government and the state government have never been able to agree because of this very reason the federal government will take a different interpretation yeah. and the state government will take a different interpretation yeah. when two sides cannot agree you need a referee and the proper referee is the court. the court so let the court decide and let us finally achieve what we always should have achieved which is clarity about our 40 percent entitlement under 112c hmm. wow saya, saya sebenarnya bila saya dengar datuk cerita ni kan saya tiba-tiba teringat pasal tahap pemikiran tahap pendidikan <coughs> masyarakat kita uh, bukan kita bukan merendahkan tetapi bila mengenangkan berkenaan dengan komplikatednya tentang kutipan hasil yang dikutip oleh persekutuan di Sabah tu sahaja pun sebenarnya ramai orang masih lagi tidak dapat uh, tidak dapat dia punya intipati yang paling tepat lah maksud saya tu dia bila saya mula memahami MN63 tu itself sampai yang ada dalam perlembagaan tu bila saya baca satu-satu kan saya sebenarnya saya nampak kita punya cabaran ya. cabaran kita ni adalah orang kita sendiri orang kita orang Sabah sendiri sebenarnya kita kekurangan orang yang mau ambil tahu yes ha, buka ambil tahu satu tapi mau menguasai pun tidak ramai mau betul-betul mau you know when when kita sudah kuasai of course kita akan cuba untuk fight macam Datuk Roger and kawan-kawan right so <coughs> kadang-kadang bila saya duduk kedai kopi kawan-kawan cerita kan marah 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 saya, hmm. kenapa orang tidak faham kan hmm. kenapa orang tidak faham yang kawan-kawan sudah hmm. faham ni marah sama yang tidak faham hmm. saya cakap sabarlah daripada 1881 sampai 1963 sekarang 2024 kita cuma ada satu universiti saja dan adakah British bagi pendedahan sama kita tentang pendidikan macam mana mau tadbir negara tiada ada tak dia kasih nampak kita tu perlembagaan dia diskus sendiri kita sign-sign tiba-tiba sudah jadi tiba-tiba hmm. semua 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 tiba-tiba mau belajar pun sendiri mau kena cari tahu so we have a problem yang kesan dia adalah bila kita tidak protect kita punya hak kita punya rights kita tidak mau belajar so kesunyian lah kawan-kawan kita daripada SLS fighting sesuatu yang actually bukan untuk diorang untuk kita yang bila saya terkenang kawan-kawan kita di kampung yang mungkin pendapatan hasil daripada tanam beras so tidak dapat grow disebabkan hmm. ada undang-undang berkaitan hmm. dengan beras apa semua ni pun berkait hmm. jadi um, berapa lama lagi kita mau let's say let's say let's say 
keputusan besok tidak memihak sama SLS apa lagi peluang yang kita ada I think what we need to understand is that there are several things that went wrong okay hmm. one is you're absolutely right the understanding of the constitution is very low yeah. okay remember I started by saying that the constitution is very difficult to understand so if I as a lawyer who reads laws day in and day out yeah. also say I find it very hard to understand the constitution what more you're yeah. right yeah. people who do not read laws who do not do it as a job every day it's very hard to understand so on one hand there is a lack of education yeah. on the constitution so that's one thing yeah. the other thing is as you would know there's a very um, a low understanding of MA 63 how this became this yeah. right there's very little understanding of that as well and don't know what the reason is but that is the fact so you when we all went to well not not all of us but when I went to school what did I learn yeah. the only thing I learned was Merdeka 31st of August Tunku Abdul Rahman Merdeka 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 itu saja okay they do not teach you about September uh, 16th, 16th right 16th of September they don't teach you about September 16th they don't teach you that there's another that was when Malaysia uh, was formed they only tell you Malaysia Merdeka 13, uh, 31 August mm. right so imagine that is how a lot of people understands Malaysia okay they don't understand this they don't understand this because you're only taught a certain thing so you have an issue where people do not understand the federal constitution they do not understand the MN63 and because of that they do not understand their rights and for the longest time Sabah people unfortunately were not aware of their rights and dare I say maybe a lot of politicians also did not know their rights okay so we elected a lot of politicians who didn't understand this as well and when they went to parliament they also did not know what they were meant to ask for they did not know what they were meant to be fighting for because they themselves didn't understand so what is very crucial it's very very crucial very important that we must teach our Sabahans about what Sabah and Sarawak is meant to get mm. the 20 points for Sabah and the 18 points for Sarawak we need to make this as important as the Rukun Negara for mm. Sabah so in Sabah we should be teaching this to everyone in the schools the 20 points how many people actually know about the 20 points what are the 20 points don't know you may have heard about the 20 points we don't know what it is right but you definitely can cite you can you can memorize the Rukun Negara you can say what is in the Rukun Negara but that's it after that I ask you what are the 20 points you wouldn't be able to know what the 20 points are why mm -hmm. okay so have we failed in that because we should know what is in the 20 points and we should know what was agreed in MA 63 so that we do not lose sight of what is our hak our right mm -hmm. and when I say it's a hak our right I say that in the strongest possible way because what is in the federal constitution I said this before is your God given right it's your Allah given right okay because what is inside here means it's mine I can demand for it mm. okay but somewhere along the line between 1969 to 2022 things were dropped when did you hear about the 40% yeah. five six years ago maybe mm. actively in the, the 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 population but before that maybe some politicians know maybe they were talking about it but how about the public you know the difference between then and now very simple now it's no longer in the hands of the politicians mm. it's in the hands of the public look at how much difference that makes people like you the SLS action these are all in the hands of the public the politicians the governments have been talking about this behind closed door for how yes. many years and they get nowhere 
the public do not understand anything what's happening but in the past five or six years when this whole thing blew up and everyone started to understand what they were talking about this is where we are now we are demanding and you know what you can now no longer hide this from the rakyat anymore in the past if the politicians don't say it all of us would not know anything and we are the more stupid because we don't know something we won't demand for something yeah but today you tell me which government is going to run for elections and not saying that i will fight for ma633 for my 40 percent <laughs> right no government is going to do that every single government every single political party will say this is me yeah, my in my manifesto memang ada this is the difference okay and that's why we are living in very different times yeah. from 10 years ago because you can no longer what we say in english um, stuff this back into the genie bottle you mm. cannot do that anymore it's out already yeah. and once it's out we will never be fooled again yeah jadi macam mana lah kita mau pilih calon pilihan raya selepas ni semua pun ya yeah, MN63 dia bilang kan <laughs> <laughs> tapi uh, sebenarnya dalam kita ketawa ni uh, kita sebenarnya masih lagi risau pasal besok kita harap harapkan uh, SLS okay, Datuk Roja dan juga kawan-kawan uh, can do the best dan kita doakan semoga hakim yang datang juga dibukakan hati mereka diberikan ke uh, diberilah satu sudut pandang yang uh, memihaklah kepada kita punya hak dan saya saya rasa uh, ini kepada kawan-kawan saya lah yang ada komen dalam social media saya beritahu ini bukan kerja kita uh, ini kerja menteri-menteri itu ini bukan kerja kita, ini kerja menteri tapi sebenarnya ini bukan juga mau cakap kerja kita atau kerja menteri kita macam tim bola yang kerja main bola tu pemain bola tapi yang paling excited siapa? bukan kita ada lebih kurang macam tu lah so this is about time yang kenapa kita tidak boleh bersorak kita boleh sorak untuk bola tapi kita tak boleh sorak pasal ni kita kenapa? sebab kita tak faham jadi malam ni sesi malam ni sebenarnya kita mau bagi kamu faham jadi kita harap lah <coughs> kan kita harap uh, kamu boleh zahir kan kamu punya sokongan saya ada sediakan uh, logo khas untuk bagi uh, apa bagi sokongan moral tu okey kita ada satu design tu yang khas tu kamu boleh post guna kamu punya profile picture ke post share bagi tahu dan kita bagi tumpuan besok untuk dapatkan uh, keep on updates berkenaan dengan perkembangan besok jadi mungkin ada kata-kata akhir daripada Datuk Roja uh Thank you. I, I mean, I, I think what is very crucial is the people, like I said, um, understand what the fight is all about. Okay. Uh, if you say that it is for the politicians to do, then you must remember one thing. We are the ones who elect the politicians. So if the politicians, for whatever reason, do not do their jobs properly, then who is the one who should be doing something? Obviously, it's the people, it's you. You need to do something in order for the politicians to realize how important it is to you. Once the politicians know that it is it's very important to you, like I said, now that this MA63, this 40% um, hub is something that every Sabahan is talking about, the politicians will never run away from this 40% fight and that is because you the people of Sabah actually made that happen because you are demanding for it so do not say that it is for the politicians to do if SLS fought like that the action would never have been filed we would just say well it's meant to be for the uh, 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 state government to start the action mm -hmm. theoretically speaking it is correct it should be the yes. state government starting the action but has it been done it's been over nearly it's been 50 years and there's been nothing we already okay. have 16 chief minister yes there have been a lot of talks yeah. uh, in the past 10 to 15 years but nothing has come out of that so if we wait will anything come out of that I will say that they will agree to disagree and that will be the end right and because of that 
the people need to do something and that is a very reason why SLS is actually taking up this action because SLS is standing with the people when it comes to issues of law SLS should stand for the people and interpret or get someone to interpret the law what is the law all about so this action is not for SLS it is for the people of Sabah it is so that Sabahans can hopefully finally move on and determine what is this actual 40% and what how do we calculate this 40% then we would solve the biggest problem that negotiations have had in the past 10 to 15 years when we cannot agree even on these very simple points but we need to overcome the hurdle tomorrow because without overcoming that hurdle we do not even get to talk about whether or not we are entitled to the 40% and whether or not uh, you, how do you calculate the 40% so that is why it's important this is for the people of Sabah as, um, as what we said earlier it's not for us it's for everyone in Sabah it's for your children it's for the future so that is the reason why tomorrow is so important ok terima kasih Datuk Roger Chin daripada SLS jadi itu sejak daripada kami pada hari ini saya Irwan Idris Borneo Podcast and Roger signing off <laughs> Sabah, Sabah Baini, Baini.